one of the biggest trends this year and I think for next year as well is going to be the number of reversals that we have to do. This is because Patients and clinicians alike are realizing that many fillers last much longer than they first expected, and this over time builds up an increasing need to reverse previously done procedures. Even if they were done correctly, the product can change in its position or its volume over time, and as clinicians, we need to know how to solve this and to navigate the many dynamics of this fairly awkward consultation and treatment. So that's what this show is all about. So what actually is the lip dissolving procedure? When we treated a patient with hyaluronic acid, we can dissolve that treatment using hyaluronidase, an enzyme that simply breaks down the filler into its monosaccharide units. Now, this is a fantastic benefit of using hyaluronic acid, but it shouldn't be done willy-nilly because, of course, there are potential risks, the most common of which, I think, is the development of an allergic re response to the reversing agent. So we need to do this in a way that decreases the total exposure to the allergen, to the reversing agent. So we need to get dissolving done preferably in one session and not spread out over 10 sessions because I think that's probably the best way that you could cause a patient to become allergic. We're trying to place just enough of the hyaluronidase into a lip for example to dissolve um, what we need to to get the patient more confident to either go on without a further treatment or to retreat in a way that makes them happier. And we're trying our best not to do this in a tennis type way. There's, there's, there are unfortunately a cohort of patients who treat and reverse, treat and reverse, and it never ends well. So we've got to try and do this as little as possible with patients who are informed as possible in a way that we're very clear about what the good outcome is when we are succeeding and when we're not. So allergies, it's hard to find data on this. I found one paper suggesting a rate of about one in 2000 are allergic to hyaluronidase, days, which is not sky high but it's probably higher than anything else that we use in medical aesthetics and when a patient does have this which I've now had in my clinic a couple of times and I'm aware through hearsay which is always the issue they never seem to get reported of one patient ending up very seriously ill from a hyaluron days exposure that's one of many many tens of thousands maybe even hundreds of thousands so I'm not saying it's high risk but it is one thing that you want to mitigate against particularly if you're a lone practitioner operating in a clinic by yourself without support, we want to be doing things to reduce the risk of finding yourself having to deal with anaphylaxis. I wouldn't say it's high risk, but it's higher than anything else that we do. Uh, and so it's worth understanding that before you start. Aside from allergic reaction, there are no other serious proven risks, but it's worth knowing if you're going to go down this route, and no doubt there will be people on this very video commenting on this, is that there are people who believe that it causes dissolving of other tissues, particularly collagen. Now, I don't believe there's any real evidence to show this, although there are many people who will say that they've had this experience. Um, this, is not, this is very hard to quantify and see in photos, and it's worth knowing that dynamic because I would be very reluctant to treat someone who had a belief that it could dissolve collagen because you're already setting up for a negative outcome. If I don't believe that and they do believe it, then I can't treat them. Um, because we're believing two very, very different things about the potential outcomes of the procedure. So I think it's worth having that discussion. And it's for, it's for no other reason than uh, I know that the, one of the biggest outcomes of any aesthetic procedure is how people feel. And if people have a doubt, they carry that into, them, into the procedure with them. It can then linger and cause much unhappiness for many years for the patient. And so it's often not the right thing to do if someone's very anxious about any procedure. But hyaluron days in this case, I would include as a very important example of when not to treat when someone believes something different to you about the outcome. So one of the common questions that came up on my Instagram was basically what even is hyaluronidase? So this is actually just an enzyme that breaks down hyaluronic acid. In fact, all of our lives start with hyaluronidase because it's an enzyme on the tip of the sperm that eats its way through the egg, dissolving the hyaluronic acid that coats part of the ovum. I believe one day I believe in the future, I believe in the past, I believe what you truly desire, you can bring the past, all you need is a focus. And that's how babies start, so our lives start with hyaluron days and then we end up talking about it many years later while we're trying to look younger. So uh, it's all over nature. We've all we've got it in our bodies. Um, many of the hyaluronidases that we use in medicine, there's a genetic recombinant version that's based on the human hyaluronidase, but many of the others come from animal proteins, so bovine, porcine, testicles. So they actually make hyaluronidase from the testicles of these animals.
purify it and that's what you're having injected. Um, but it's basically a very, very similar enzyme with some very small differences, which is why allergic reactions are more common with the non-human copy. So the enzyme essentially just adds water to the polysaccharide chain, splitting it in half. And that's why it's called hydrolyzing. It doesn't actually dissolve it. It just adds water and splits these sugars into small monosaccharide components that float off and you are free from the hyaluronic acid. So how do I know when lip fillers need to be dissolved? So in medical aesthetics, I believe that we make three diagnoses. If we're doing a good job, we have to look at the patient through multiple dimensions. Of course, there's the medical. So you would dissolve in an emergency with a complication. The next one would be the social. Other people are essentially rejecting our patient because they don't like the lip filler. So you might see, and this may not even be something the patient knows, but if you see someone who's very over-treated, you could advise in your clinic that this is a social risk for them, that they are un unlikely to be received in the way that they are hoping if they walk around with so much lip filler in you know that looks wrong for example you'd be very delicate with how you do this but this is another reason why you might suggest dissolving and of course the most common would be the patient's experience that they themselves don't like how the filler is making them feel and they want to get rid of it so those are the indications for, tr for treatment broadly speaking that you have a medical complication that they don't look right from the outside world in or they don't feel like from feel right from the inside out is there ever a situation where you should just let the filler dissolve naturally over time? I think yes, it's, it's reasonable, particularly in patients who are quite early in the journey, who think it's only slightly over-treated, that you might think, well, let's leave it a couple of months and see if it settles. Um, there are patients who break down filler quite quickly. So there's a cohort of people who are on the nail, seems to disappear after six months. And then there are those other people who seem to get months longer, even years longer. And that's where I think it doesn't make sense. So if you have a patient who was treated a year or two years ago who doesn't like what they're seeing, it's probably no point waiting another six months. It's probably going to stay there. But if it was only done very recently, there's a chance they're one of the cohorts who are going to dissolve naturally. You may decide they're not that upset by it. It's only mild that you give it a couple of months and then decide. Is hyaluron days more painful than filling the lips for the patient? So a lot of people say hyaluron days is particularly painful. And I'm very confused by this because I have never experienced a patient in significant discomfort during a reversal. Now I try where I can to use a cannula. I also use bacteriostatic saline and I'm wondering if maybe certain people are using different salines, not that it's wrong because it, uh, it could be normal saline. Maybe some people are using water for injection, which would be very painful to inject. So maybe there's something else going on with what's being injected. I know some people also mix lidocaine and lidocaine actually stings when it first goes in. It's one of the reasons I don't use it that often as I think you, you, it's hard to get through the process of injecting the anesthetic without causing pain. So maybe you can do the procedure without the anesthetic. Um, so it could be that, but I, my personal experience with patients having reversals is that it's not that painful. And I, I'm still confused at why so many people say that it is very painful. Maybe you can let me know in the comments what it is that you mix your hyaluron days with and whether you think your patient is in more pain or less pain than average. I use non uh, bacteriostatic saline and I don't find that it hurts that much. So how long does it take for the skin to return to its previous state after dissolving? So this is one of those areas that's contentious and people have a differing points of view. Understanding hyaluronic acid, we know that it's produced on a continuous production cycle and it's essentially replaced every 36 hours or so. The half-life is roughly 36 hours, so it's replaced longer than that. It probably takes four or five days if you level everything for it to regrow and go back to where it was before. So I would expect the average patient to replace the hyaluronic acid which was dissolved within about a week. That's not to say that they would perceive that because if you've dissolved, say, five mils of filler over time, plus the natural hyaluronic acid, the five mils is gonna be a bit of a shock to the system. If you are interested in going through this in more detail, I do have a course that covers exactly this and all the stages and the communication skills and the process that you need to dissolve fillers, and it's available on my website. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.